Grok, the new AI chatbot on x.com is finally available today and I wanna take it for a detailed test drive in this video. So I'll run Grok through 10 different prompts across the most used categories when it comes to using these type of AI models. So I'll do research, email drafting, marketing data analysis, problem solving, and five more. And then I'll also compare it between a couple other chatbots like ChatGPT and Bar, just to kind of show you what kind of results you get in Grok versus the other models. And Grok requires a paid subscription to X Premium Plus, which right now is $16 a month. So let me show you how to do that first. Go to your x.com profile. This is the old twitter.com. Go to more and then go to settings. You could do this on mobile, but I signed up before for the regular X Premium. And under the settings menu, right over here where it says premium, click over here. And then you'll see the options here, premium and premium plus. And basically there is different tiers to the paid version of X here. So there's a version of it called Premium Plus, which is what I upgraded to $16 a month. But there's another version called Premium. This one is not gonna get you Grok though. So this one I was paying for before is $8 a month. You get the little check mark verification. So if you have this one, you have to upgrade to the next tier. This is the top tier right now that I could upgrade to Premium Plus. So make sure you get that and then you're gonna get access to Grok right here, Grok early access check mark. Now, once you get the upgrade, right over here on the left side, you'll see Grok. If you don't have it just yet, it might not just be available yet for your account. So you have to wait, they're rolling this out. I did sign up for the early access. And here's basically the homepage of Grok. When you start a conversation, to reset the conversation, you have to press this right here and it will reset that conversation. So you can't just start a new chat and save the existing chat for some reason. If I go back, it's just gonna bring me back to whatever page I was on. If I press Grok, it's gonna bring me back to whatever chat I was on. So that is a weird limitation. I wanna save my chats like every other large language model had since day one. And it does have two different modes. So if you click up here, you have a regular mode and you can see the little logo changes here when you go to fun mode. So fun mode is really more for getting Grok to roast you. So here it says, roast me on Grok. Let me just click this to see what happens. And then every time it does some sort of search here for whatever prompt you give it. And the results are actually not too bad. It says I'm a self-proclaimed director of video production, but I'm actually a glorified YouTube spammer. Wow, that is insulting. Uh, it says I'm stuck on GPT-2 loop. <laughs> So that's not too bad for the fun mode, but let's get to the actual use case of Grok. But they did promote this as a funny version of a large language model AI. So ChatGPT, you have to prompt it to be funny. Grok in fun mode is just supposed to be funny. And it did a good job roasting me, I guess. But let me go ahead and reset it. So again, to start a new chat, every time you have to clear conversation and press yes, and it brings you back to the homepage. And I have no idea where to find that previous conversation. I guess it just gets lost every single time. But let's go ahead and do some of the useful stuff here, which is one of the things Grok can do that no one else could do is it could have more up-to-date information about today about the things that are being posted on X right now. So no one else has access to the X posts, Grok does. So the very first thing I wanna ask it is what's happening in AI today? And while it's doing that, let's ask ChatGPT the same question, and let's go ahead and ask Bard the same question. So Grok kind of gave me this long answer here, and on the bottom you'll see what Grok does is it makes references to the different posts here on x.com. So the rundown is like an AI newsletter, so it pulled something from there. And let me see the date here, December 4th, November 27th. So it's actually not doing a good job pulling things from today. These are kind of, outdated. And as I read through this, there is literally zero mention of Grok, which should be the news today, right? This came out today. So how come it didn't mention that? And there's no news of Google Gemini, which I covered in yesterday's video. And there's no mention of that either. So that is not very useful. If I ask it what's happening today, they claim that this is the most up-to-date AI model you could use. And I literally got things that are from three days ago, as the latest, right? Not at all from today. Let's see what ChatGPT gave us. Look at that, ChatGPT, Gemini. Okay, so more up to date. Meta AI translation model, which also came out yesterday, but no mention of Grok here either. But again, better, right? We got Gemini. Okay, Bard gave us the most complete answer. So we got Gemini outperforms ChatGPT. So again, Gemini 
a one day old news here we got any mention of grok no still nobody's mentioning grok here in the today ai update but as you could see already grok in the thing that is supposed to be the best stat it's lost to chat gpt and Bard. And I am using GPT-4 just because I am paying for Grok, so it makes sense to use the paid version of ChatGPT, but Bard, which gave us the best answer, is the free model, right? So this outperformed all of them. That's why I usually use Bard when I'm doing more up-to-date research over any other large language models. So sometimes people ask me, well, can I just stick to one large language model? Where it depends if I'm using a lot of YouTube content in my research or I'm doing up-to-date information, I really like Bard and for everything else, I'm kind of between ChatGPT and Claude, but Grok so far, not winning. Let's do another one. I'm gonna change this back to regular mode here to get actual useful answers here. I know most of us are using these for practical applications, not just to get jokes out of Grok. So let's go ahead and paste this prompt. Summarize the latest research finding in generative AI from the past year. So I'm trying to summarize what's going on this whole year. And this time let's run the same through Bard as well. And I read through the result one more time from Grok. And again, it is missing the point of being up to date. I do like the tone though in this regular mode. It actually wrote in a way that I like. It's not very spammy. It's not very promotional. It's not trying to be funny. It just gave you the facts, but it's stuck on pretty old outdated information. So it's all about GPT-3. It has no mention of anything that's happened recently. It really went all the way back to January 1st. And you can see these tweets here is just pulling from random dates. And from my research so far, it is not at all clear how it's sorting the content that is pulling the information from. So it is pulling from a lot of different resources here. So for research, I'm not getting anything that is usable. It is really outdated information. I'm going to ask it here to give me three reputable sources to see if it can actually give me links to outside of these posts here that is finding. And it pulled up some links here. They are not clickable though. So I will have to copy and paste these links and then just open a browser here to see what these are. So that is another limitations. And I'm gonna just copy this and open it in a new page. And it says page not found. That is odd. I don't know if it just hallucinated this link. Let me just check another link because that is very strange. Wow, that is odd. The second link I tested too, it says page moved or renamed. Okay, so that is a huge problem. I just got made up links basically or links that don't exist, but I just asked it for three reputable resources. And I don't know if he made up the links or he gave me outdated links. Some of the, Sometimes they hallucinate these language models and sometimes they literally make up a link to a thing that doesn't exist. It looks like that's what might be happening here, but it did give, give me these tweets here and some of these are a little bit more updated. And when it comes to research again, Bard is completely destroying Grok. So GPT-4, way more things that are updated and it broken down to different categories, not a whole lump of text that I got. I got these links. Oh, this is good. This is the McKenzie link. Let's see if this works. Okay, hyperlink to a page that actually exists. So in research, Grok gets an absolute zero and Bard is probably going to be my choice every time when it comes to research. Let's go to the next category, which is creative writing. And Grok, every time you reset a chat, it always defaults back to fun mode. So if you don't want fun mode, you do have to manually change it. I have a creative prompt here to write a short story about the future. Let's see what we get here. And this time I'll use ChatGPT. That's more creative than Bard. Okay, and I read through the results here. It's not too bad. So it took the year 2084. It did create a story that kind of makes sense. It did create a protagonist here, Mira. And everything about it, I like. So that was in fun mode. It did a pretty good job. And ChatGPT, well, we got an error message on ChatGPT, although it looks like it was trying to do something much longer. I got a network error here as it was writing it. So I could obviously press regenerate. But as I was reading through this, very similar a little bit later in the future here, but it created a protagonist, Eli, a young historian, and again, pretty good. So when it comes to creativity, it looks like Grok is capable of coming up with something decent. Okay, let's get to more practical application. Let's do email composition. A lot of us are gonna use these type of large language model AIs to draft emails, to respond to the email. So I'm gonna draft a professional email explaining a delay in a project. And the results here were fantastic. Even though I'm on fun mode here, it there is no fun at all, 
Okay, so he just gave me a very professional email here, listing out the reasons, did the formatting correctly. Let me just try the same prompt in regular mode. I just wanna make sure it's giving me exactly what I want again. And this time it wrote a little bit longer, but it's still in the same tone. It did a really good job. Let's see how it deals with prompt revision. So I'm gonna ask it for something that's half the length. Okay, this is what I got. So let's go right here. And it looks like, yeah, it's pretty much half the length here. And again, the tone is exactly what I want out of when I'm drafting a professional email, especially for type of client work that I do. Great. Okay, so I'm happy with this. Grok did a good job. ChatGPT usually is where I do my email drafting, but I'm really liking what Grok gave me here. Okay, this one is going to be in the world of marketing, which again, I know a lot of people use AI models for this, create a compelling marketing strategy for a new fitness app targeting young professionals. You gave me a title, target audience, objective, marketing channels. Oh, look at that. It's telling me I should use X ads as my first marketing channel. Interesting. And overall, I think it did a good job. Kind of strange to use your own platform here as your first recommendation, but I guess a lot of people do that. If you look up a video on Google, you usually get a YouTube result, not something else. Okay, this time we're gonna do something in the technical understanding, a little bit more advanced. Describe blockchain technology and the applications, specifically in the financial services. And this time it did do a good job. It actually did a nice job explaining it, the language and the tone I really like. You gave us some resources down here. Again, they, they all look somewhat recent. Yeah, they're all within the last few weeks here as far as the posts that is using for reference. So again, not a bad job on this type of more high-end research and high-end technical explanation. It did a good job simplifying everything in a way where anybody could understand. The only thing is I noticed when it's on fun mode, again, by default and regular mode, a lot of times... There's nothing fun mode about this. So I don't know, it's just kind of giving, I mean, I like the answer, but I don't know why I would change it to regular mode if I'm getting what I want out of the fun mode. I thought that would just always try to take a funny angle to it. Okay, let's do some data analysis. Let's see what kind of resources it has. Provide a detailed analysis of the latest trend of social media use among teenagers in the US. And it gave me a pretty long answer. So let me see if I could get a one paragraph summary. And here's the answer. So let's see some of the resources to give us March 26th, April 19th, March 10th. So this one is a little bit more outdated on the content that is pulling up for the answer. And it's not bad though. The answer actually makes a lot of sense. Let's see what Bard gave us. And Bard gave us again, a much more detailed and more useful answer with bullet points about the key trends here, additional insights, and we got linked resources here. So again, this is data analysis on what is available on the internet. And as far as uploading documents to analyze, Grok has no capabilities like that. So here I could upload images inside of ChatGPT. They have something called Code Interpreter to really dive into PDFs. None of that is available, so I can't show you any of that. Grok is not multimodal. ChatGPT and Bard have multimodal capabilities, meaning they could understand text, they could understand code images, and a lot more. Let's see if Grok could actually write any type of code. So I said, can you write a HTML code with inline CSS for a simple website? And it does look like it understands how to do coding. And I asked it if it could write Python code for a game of Snake, and it does look like it's giving us a step-by-step -step guide. So it is capable of coding, it looks like, but I haven't really taken it for a deep test drive on how accurate these codes are. I have had the same exact test go down with ChatGPT, and I was able to actually make games with Tic-Tac-Toe and Snake and things like that on my computer without really knowing any code and following this exact path. So it's doing a good job here from what I remember ChatGPT giving me. And what about problem solving? So suggest a solution to reducing urban traffic congestion based on a successful case studies around the world. Okay, now it's getting funny. Well, 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 dear human. So out of the blue, now the fun mode kicked in. So you could see sometimes the fun mode kicks in. And when I was testing it too, it was like sometimes it would work and it would be funny, sometimes it wouldn't. But this time it looks like it took the fun direction. But let's see if it's actually gonna give us useful information. Okay, I read through that, not too bad. Everything here that I read kind of makes sense. 
Let's see if it's gonna do that thing where it makes up links. I'm gonna ask for three resources. And it gave me three resources, but no links to be found. So it just pulled the resources again from X. I'm gonna ask for links. Okay, we got three links here based on those three resources. I'm gonna copy and check this one. It just took me to that website, but it just redirected to the topics page. It did not take me to the page where the link came from. Very strange. Okay, the first link did take me to the page here. Let me just click on it. Okay, so one of them worked. So, so far I tested four or five links in this video and only one of them actually went to a page where the content came from. The other ones either redirected or the page just didn't exist. And it's pulling from more recent data. So I can't imagine these websites just pulling down those pages that it's getting the information from. Really odd. But all the 10 categories, including a couple of them I didn't go through, like language translation and educational content, there's prompts that I'm including below in those 10 categories. So if you want to copy and paste and test this out for yourself, they're all included below. And I recently made a video called the top 50 AI tools explained in one video. That's going to give you a complete big picture overview on pretty much everything in the world of AI all in one single video. So if you want to learn more about the top 50 AI tools, not just these AI text models, I will link that here as well. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time.